Hello everyone, it's, it's Monday, it's time for art school. It's not seven o'clock, I'm so sorry, we've had a few gremlins this week. We're actually on the page as you go in the studio and somebody forgot to top up the thing. Um, but we've got it working and it's amazing to be here with you. We've actually got a really special episode today. We're going to be talking all about women in art. We're going to take a look at your homework, of course. We're going to play Art World Smelliest Rotters, Brilliant or Bananas. We've got a few other nice surprises for you. So thank you. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for bearing with us. It's time for Art School. Art School. It's Art School. It's like normal school, but more arty. Because it's Art School. Okay, so normally we have a special guest on the show, and today is absolutely no exception. But this week, instead of having someone from the outside world, I want to introduce you to someone very amazing, someone very special, someone from right here in the studio. Everybody, can you get up for Liam, who helps us yeah. make all hey guys, the gizmos work? Um, this is Liam, Thanks. it's amazing to see you. Um, so basically, if you don't know, Liam makes the show work, and tonight he's had a bit of stress because it wasn't, wasn't playing along. But yeah. Liam is also an amazing artist, and he started painting, and he's done his homework this week, which is a series of self-portraits that he's been making for a while. Yeah. So when did you start yeah. making your work, Liam? Um, around two, three months ago when I started working for you. started mm -hmm. like with drawing and stuff, and then you told me about um, like uh, charcoal, so I started with charcoal, then potion acrylics, and... And yeah, now I'm yeah. just getting to oils a little bit and stuff. So. And I think the interesting thing about Liam's work is he's focused on himself. So he's used self-portraiture throughout the whole thing and he's created a really powerful series of again and again and again in really different ways. And you've brought something yeah. to show us, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a look. Yeah. But earlier on you were telling me about your, your process and yeah. the, the, there's, photogra there's photographs involved. Yeah, um, not, not too much though. Yeah. So, so Stuart told me like a way of warming up which is to have like a photo and then you you pretty much just draw you draw it but you don't look at what you're doing so you just look at what your so I have the photo there and I'll just be drawn like that and then like it makes some really weird like distortions uh -huh. and stuff like that and I use that for like the inspiration uh, for yeah for myself but I, I think one of the things I really like about the work is it's obviously you and yeah. of you and it has this amazing kind of personality that yeah. comes through yeah. and I love the way that you work in series like this. Mm. Yeah, thanks. But I, 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 it's just the natural thing to do. Like I know the most about myself, kind of thing, and, and yeah. so it's just what feels but right. But do you feel that they kind of resonate with your personality? Yeah. yeah, and just like maybe how I'm feeling like inside sometimes, or I don't know. I try to like break down the barrier between um, like what's inside and, and putting it onto putting it onto the paper, kind of thing. Mm. And, and really not, not um, be focused on whether I'm going to mess it up or not. Like, that's quite an important thing. I'll just really just not be afraid and just do, do whatever feels right. And you've just got to follow comes, Yeah. Oh, Liam, honestly, they're that. amazing. And for someone, yeah. I think you guys will agree, for someone who's only been painting for a couple of months, mm. actually, they're quite, they're quite <laughs> meaty things. Yeah. I mean, oh, there's some personalities and stuff. Thanks. They're good work, man. They really are. Thanks and so much. Yeah, so everybody, Liam not only makes the show work, he actually is quite an awesome painter. So, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thanks for everything. Thanks okay. For everything. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, <laughs> he's going to go back and press the buttons now. Um, now, you guys have been really engaged with the new community that we set up, and you've uploaded some amazing work. Normally, I just focus on one or two bits of homework, but that just seemed really wrong today. There is so much on the community. Honestly, if you're not part of the community, get on there because there's, do you know what? You're a lovely lot and you're all supporting each other, discussing each other's work. And I loved seeing what you made because now I know who you all are. So actually, the selfie project was perfect. So let's take a look at some of the selfies you lot made for homework. Holly Moon has shared this work in which she superimposed a poem she's written over a shadow photograph that she took previously. And Jason Baker has shared this piece called My Cardboard Britney Life, in which he's taken an Instagram selfie and used acrylics on copy paper. Jason actually exhibited this piece at the Norfolk Arts Centre this week, so well done, Jason. Ellen Riley shared this painting called Transforms, and Jules shared this beautiful ink drawing on a swan's feather. 
and she's titled this piece, Break a Man's Arm. Liz Kelly Zook has shared her selfie. She says normally she appears on the outside to be quite happy and smiley, but in real life she's quite introverted. She's used blood from a punch as lipstick on this one. Onute, I hope I pronounced your name right, has presented a beautiful drawing here in black Sakura pen and pink pencil on paper. John Renhard shared this digital photo with us all. And he says it's got just a hint of Photoshop. Sarah Dunkel, another really powerful painting here. And this one by Hollingsworth Manor, which again is a deeply personal work. And I urge everybody to look at what she's got to say about that on the community. I'm not going to paraphrase it. It'd be better to hear it from her. Gay Tail shared this piece, which is uh, a selfie, a self-portrait of her on a bad day. Nigel Fairbrother has shared this quite revealing selfie. And Donna Bella has shared a self-portrait of punk me, age 16. I think this is brilliant. I love the badge. Saffron has shared this self-portrait in her painting Scruffs. And Julia Erinschak, I hope I got that right, has shared another kind of selfie. And finally, Ben Moss, this beautiful digital self-portrait in which he's pushed his head shape a bit. Well done, everyone. Wow, there's a lot of love out there tonight, isn't there? And it's so nice to see you all supporting each other's work, which is actually the whole point of this. And Liam, um, a lot of people like what you've been up to as well. So, yeah, great paintings. Okay, guys, so this week, as I said, is going to be all about women in art. And this kind of came about because a few weeks ago, I was investigating the highest grossing artists at auction. And I was quite shocked by the lack of female artists earning the same money as men at auction. And I stumbled across this graph. And this is absolutely horrendous. It's shocking. That tiny sliver is 2%. So this is the top, the top 100 highest grossing artists at auction in the world ever. And only 2% of them are women. That's absolutely unbelievably appalling. So I thought we'll do a whole show about women in art. So I delved into this a little bit further and I found another graph which actually shows how many females, as opposed to men, have solo exhibitions in U US institutions. And as you can see, the disparity here is absolutely monumental. Now, it's been like this for a while, and some artists I really respect, I guess you could call them feminist artists, the Gorilla Girls actually made a scorecard for commercial galleries. And on that scorecard, they rated the top commercial galleries and wrote next to them how many female artists they represented. And the numbers were shocking. You've got noughts and ones. Now, quite recently, um, Pussy Galore have remade that scorecard, and they've rated today's biggest commercial galleries with what percentage of female artists they represent. Yes, it's a little bit better, but it's still shocking. I mean, you'd expect more out of, say, Gagosian, for example. Only 15% of their artists are women. I mean, I can't get my head around that. I mean, surely there's as many good female artists as male artists, so what's going on? A lot of these galleries have tried to readdress the situation. Gagosian putting on an all-women show, for example, and Sotheby's an all-female auction. But I wonder if that's more like political correctness, trying to gloss over their image, rather than the fact that they're actually harnessing really powerful work. Delving into it, I think art history is really to blame. If you go way back when, Egyptian times, there's great empowering images of women. I mean, they were where it all came from. I mean, they were at the top of the shop. And it's the same in ancient Sumeria and various other places, Greece, for example. It's in relatively recent times that we fall into this dodgy situation where blokes are writing about art Blokes are making art for other blokes to look at. And really, it's this idea of the male gaze, that artists, male artists, blokes, are creating images of women for other blokes. And that is a really deeply problematic thing. Because what you start to do is get this situation where women are 
overtly objectified. They become an image to be looked at. And of course, coming from that perspective, bearing in mind that men are the gatekeepers of the art world, why are they ever going to start respecting the work? You get situations where poor old Lee Krasner, amazing abstract expressionist painter, just amazing, literally cowering in the corner of the studio whilst Jackson Pollock splats his paint all over the place. And it's not just there. I mean, this is throughout the whole history of the thing. People like Marisol Escobar, amazing pop artist, going around at the same time as Warhol and all the rest of them, completely overlooked by history. And it really is time that we get history out of the bucket and talk about histories, plural, not this one male-dominated line of actually kind of what happened. Now, with people like Marisol, you could be sceptical, you could be a bit cynical, you could say that the art world has found this huge untapped resource of work, massive stockpile of good stuff that they can flog, and that's why these artists are coming to market. Either way, it's just blooming good that people are starting to get the recognition that they deserved in their own time. And we're seeing great curation. Things like the Denver Art Museum, they did a great show about women in abstract expressionism, cleverly curated, proper show and we want more of that please but actually people we're at a really lucky time because some of the greatest artists that are roaming around at the moment are female artists and some of my favorite Rachel Whiteread in my opinion maybe the greatest sculptor that's about at the moment definitely one of them Marina Abramovich pushing performance art to the absolute masses I mean she was in a Jay-Z video amazing and Jenny Savile, I mean, one of my favourite painters of all time, every bit as good as Francis Bacon or someone like Lucien Freud. And there's hope, there's massive hope because there's a new generation of artists, people like my friend Sarah Maple, who's not scared to speak out about these issues and these inequalities in her work. And just touching on it, because you guys should look her up and find out everything you can about Sarah, there's a series she made that I absolutely love where she took Disney princesses and superimposed them into jobs that were typically for the boys. So Sarah took uh, Snow White, for example, and made her work in a science lab. Good work, Sarah. Absolutely love it. Right, so on the subject of female artists and auctions and the market and that kind of thing, I've compiled a little list of the top five highest grossing female artists at auction. At number five, it's Natalia Sergeevna Goncharova with her work Les Fleurs from 1912. It sold for just under 11 million at Christie's in London. At number four this week, it's impressionist painter Berthe Morisot, who went for nearly 11 million for her work Apre de la Genere, which sold in 2013. At number three, it's Joan Mitchell's untitled work from 1960, which sold in 2014 for $11.9 million. And in at number two, it's Louise Bourgeois, of course, with $28.2 million for her nine-foot-tall spider, which she made in 1996, sold in 2015 for $28.2 million. And at number one, it's Georgia O'Keeffe, $44.4 million for her white flower, number one, from 1932. Brilliant or bananas, bananas are brilliant. Brilliant or bananas. Now, for Brilliant or Bananas, what we're going to do is show you a little film I made yesterday about an artist that, do you know what? I'm not sure. This week, I'm really not sure if they're brilliant or if they're completely and utterly bananas. I don't really know. So you guys tell me. We're going to leave the voting open until the end of the show. We're going to tally all the votes and put them together, and then we're going to find out. Do you lot think this artist is brilliant? Or are they bananas? OK, guys, so for this week's Brilliant or Bananas, we're going to take a look at the work of artist Casey Jenking. Now, she decided to spend 28 days in an art gallery in Australia and she would make a piece called Casting Off My Womb. And in that piece, she would insert wool inside herself and every day would proceed to knit the wool into a long kind of scarf-like thing that she would hang from pegs around the gallery. And her reason for doing this is she says she's a craftivist and she wants to use this action to stop people's fear of female body parts. She says a vulva is just a bit of a...
body and we shouldn't be fearful of them at all. So by knitting, and actually she did knit all the way through her menstruation, um, she felt that she could do this. So she'd turn up to the gallery every day, just wear a woolen jumper and knit for 28 days. Is doing something like that brilliant? Or is casting off your womb in a gallery by inserting wool inside yourself absolutely bananas? You tell me. Okay, so over the last week, we've had some really interesting questions come into the email address, which is artschool at stuartsemple.com. You can also message me on Facebook if you've got a burning question that you're desperate to ask. And don't forget, hit the comments, and at the end of the show, I'll do my best to answer your questions as well. So it's time to do the crit. It's time for the crit! Okay, so this week, um, Nathan has asked, can you be a successful artist and have no interest or understanding in the business side? Can you really make a living as an artist? I think that's a big question, Nathan. And um, simply, yeah, of course you can make a living as an artist. I mean, Picasso was one of the richest men who's ever lived. I mean, Damien Hirst's worth half a billion. Of course you can make a living as an artist. I mean, people do. Um, whether you have to have no interest or understanding of the business side is another question because I would argue that some of the most successful artists actually have quite a large dollop of business savvy. They seem to know what they're doing. Or at the very least, they team up with a good gallerist, a good dealer, someone who understands that side of things that helps them and then they can get on with their work. So either you find someone who's got those skills or you learn them yourself, but I think you do need them. Lisa says that her boyfriend claims that anyone can learn to draw and she's too, truly terrible. Is it right or is it a gift that you're born with? If you could learn, how do you start? You can definitely learn to draw um, and practice does make perfect, but there's no denying that there is such a thing as raw talent. I mean, some people are just born with an ability to do it. I think anyone can learn to draw just as anyone could perhaps learn to play the piano, but to do it with the flair and passion and real kind of heart in it, I think you need a bit of talent as well. To make real art, I think there needs to be some sort of spirit or soul underneath it. Um, Sharon, is it important to research your subject matter before picking up a paintbrush? How much prep do I do before I start? Everyone's different. I mean, I think basically what Liam was saying is he kind of lets the work take him where it wants to go. It kind of suggests itself. The materials give him ideas and that kind of thing. Um, personally, I like to have a bit of a plan of what I'm doing um, and what I'm trying to convey. And then I kind of freestyle. So I leave room for like happy accidents, mistakes, things to suggest themselves. But I do quite a lot of collages and preparation and stuff. And yeah, I definitely plan it out. You don't want to waste a big canvas or months making something that kind of might not work. Okay, so that was it for the crit. It's time that we had a look at some of the art world's biggest rotters. They're smelly and they're rotten. They're the smelly rotters. Okay, so this is the bit of the show where we look at some of the stinkiest, smelliest, most gross, dodgy, art world rotters. Now, our smelly rotter board is picking up in intensity. We've got poor Ivana Trump there. She's doing all right. Anish Kapoor holding his position in the middle. We've got that grave robber. We've got Charles Bronson. We've got this serial killer. And this week is no exception. I have got some absolute shockers for you. First up, are you ready? It is this bloke here. This is John Wayne Gacy. Now check this out. This guy is, was an American serial killer. He actually um, killed 33 boys and buried them underneath his house. But the weird thing about this bloke is he did it whilst he was dressed up as Pogo the Clown. And when he was on death row, he made a series of paintings of himself as a clown. 
and they're pretty gross, but he sold a bucket load of these for $20,000 each. And when he faced the lethal injection, um, he, yeah, he basically said, up yours at the end. It was awful. Kiss my ass is what he said. Um, so, I, you know, no remorse whatsoever. I mean, horrendous. Um, I'm going to pop him there. Should we put him next to the body snatcher? Okay, but we've covered up Anish. Do you think it should go up or down? Up for Pogo the Clown or down? Up? Up for Pogo? Yeah, all right, we'll leave him there for a minute. Now, let me see, show you who I've got next. This guy, George Zimmerman, um, he followed a man after they had a road rage accident, um, and he allegedly killed him. Um, and, he, and he went to prison for shooting him. He was acquitted because there was a lack of evidence, but he has committed tons of violent crimes. He's a violent bloke. I mean, he killed a dog, he threatened to shoot his wife. I mean, he's dodgy. And as soon as he was acquitted, he put his art up on eBay, which sold for $100,000. I mean, what an absolute dirty, rotten rotter. What a rotter. Um, I'm going to pop him there. Um, let up. Zimmerman up. Above the craze. Okay. We'll put him there, like under the body snatcher. Yeah, okay, it feels about right. Last but no means least. Now, this is a bit of a contentious one. This is your man, Winston Churchill. Now, we all know that he basically helped win the war. But what you might not know about dear old Winston is that he authorised the firebombing of Dresden and 25,000 people including civilians and refugees fleeing. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, is that a war crime? Did he commit a war crime? And how does that relate to art? Well, he started painting when he was 40 years old. He was incredibly prolific. At the time of his death, they found over 400 works. So, is Winston Churchill with his landscape? He's not... He's not that bad. Near the bottom, yeah, I think so. But, I mean, there's 20,000 people, people. I mean, yeah, he did win the war. Okay, I get it. Do you feel that's about right, then? I mean, that Pogo the Clown bloke, I mean, what a rotten, utter rotter. I mean, horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Right, so I think we'll leave the smelly rotters there, if you're all happy with that so far. Um, and it is time to find out the result of Brilliant or Bananas. Did you think she was brilliant or did you think she was Bananas? There's only one way to find out. We've tallied the votes. We've done the numbers. Let's run the barometer and find out. It's Bananas! She is completely and utterly bananas. She's obviously bananas. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> oh, no. How many bananas have we got? <laughs> She's bananas. She's bananas. She's bananas. She's bananas. She's bananas. She's obviously bananas. And we're almost out of time, people. Um, she was bananas, and I'd like to say you home homework. So, Simple one-ish, I've got a question for you, and the question is this. What is woman? So translate that in your work, in any way you can, with whatever media you want. Share it on the community, discuss what you're thinking with others, create something really interesting that we can all look at next week. That's the question. Deep question. Do it in any way you want. What is woman? woman. Now, we've just got 60 seconds left of the show, um, and that's just time to answer your questions. So, have we got the questions? Ugh. Here we go. What do I like about my work? Um, 
I don't really know. I don't really like it, which is why I keep making it, because I don't think any of them are very good yet. Should art be funded? Of course it should be funded. I mean, we'd be stuffed if people didn't fund the arts. We all need more of it. Fund more art. What makes me angry? I'm getting splatted every week on this show, and I think I've kind of got away with it this week. Um, what superpower would you like? I'd quite like to fly or to be able to see through walls, something like that. Name something you love. I love my son, Ari, more than anything in the world. Um, who would you like to be compared to? Oh, I don't really know. There's loads of people I like. I'm nearly out of t I'm out of time, people. So that was art school. Thanks for hanging in there because we were a bit late. And I'll see you guys, hopefully, at the right time next week, 7 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live. Love you all. Art Bye. school. It's art school. It's like normal school.